Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special episode of Business Growth Secrets. I'm joined by George Cruz, who has had a really, really successful career in sport, and we're going to uncover that and unpack that today. But he's also gone on to launch an amazing business. I'm really, really keen to hear his thoughts about how he got into this business, how the opportunity arose. Um, it's a very special day for George for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's his birthday. So happy birthday, my man. And, and secondly, today he's formally announced his retirement uh, from rugby. So it's a big, big day for him. And I'm really, uh, really pleased to be with you on this day, George, uh, talking about the new chapter and your new journey. So welcome to the show. Hope you're doing well, my friend. And super excited to get to know you a little bit better. No, so, imagine. Um, you feeling good? <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling good. Big fan. So uh, thanks for having us on. Um, but yeah, yeah, big day for me. Um, uh, and one that I can't have kind of known that's been coming for a while. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a, what do you call it? Monkey off the shoulder or, or weight off the mind type, type scenario now. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited to, to rip into the next kind of three months uh, over in Japan to finish up the season and then uh, and get back to, to London to crack on with some business. Get to work, right. Awesome. Yeah, so do you want to talk, talk us through a little bit, George, of, of, of your career? You know, I said to you prior to coming on that I, I really like interviewing and working with athletes for a couple of reasons. One, I think there's an immense, to, to be successful in what you do or any type of professional sport, you have to have an amazing amount of discipline. You know, you can't get to the very highest levels as you have without mm. having that discipline. And I feel that that's such an important element in business. I think there's a big crossover there. I also feel that the focus element of being able to focus on one thing, drive it home and, and have that discipline combined with the focus really, really builds success. So do you want to talk to us a little bit about your career? What's it been like? You know, what's the ride been like? What's the journey been like? And, uh, you know, how you got started and everything. We just dive straight back, take us right back before we get into this amazing business that you've created. Yeah, sure. Um, you, you'll have to tell me if I'm boring the life out of you, but... Um... I'll give you a, a, a one minute. Uh, I'm sure you won't. I'm sure you won't. I feel that, you know, for the uh, for the audience, it's, I think it's really, really important because so mm. many people, um, especially in a business journey, start off at a point. And in yeah. order them to reach their heights, they need to realize that it's a journey. You know, no one yeah. goes from where they are to successful overnight. There's some ups and downs. There's some bumps along the road. And I think it's really important to learn about those things, you know, from people. Yeah, and I'd say I'd be, uh, I wouldn't be that sort of overnight sort of career. So, um, it, it, yeah, I'd, I'd fully back that, that, you know, there are companies that can flick it on within, you know, a year and, and pump it, but they are the, the minority by far. A lot of like careers or, or businesses um, very much would have followed the path of, I guess, my career in rugby. So I started with um, like going down to your local minis and, you know, I, I followed my brother down who, who, uh, and, you know, I've got two two brothers, so that sort of competitiveness is very much uh, bred into you, you young. Um, so I followed, followed him down to rugby, uh, always trying to top him. He, he got some, like, county honours, and I was like, right, well, let's, uh, let's see where we get to with this. So probably took it a little bit too far. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and ended up getting, a, and, and quite late, I wasn't any part of, like, any academies or anything like that, so got a trial off the back of school uh, and went straight into, pretty much, yes, pretty much straight into a, an academy off the back of that at Saracens um, and spent the next, you know, the next 12 years there, um, and that was, that was, like, a proper growth sort of period, so I was uh, very skinny, I was probably not the best rugby player, um, but I could definitely work hard. Uh, and I think within that, like there's, you know, having a good group of players, a good group of coaches uh, lent, lent it very well to me having the ability to be able to, to work quite hard. So um, that was like the thing that kind of pushed me through, I'd say. Um, and from there picked up, um, you know, your, your, your standard sort of your first um, cup game, your first premiership game, first European game. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get some games with England off the back of that. Um, and, and yeah, it's kind of like snowballed from there. Um, managed to have a, a really good group of, of lads who, um, you know, s s enjoyed a, a heap of memories with uh, on and off field. Uh, and I'm unbelievably grateful for that. And, and you said you, you said you weren't the, you were the, 
skinny and you weren't the best player what do you and you said really you attributed hard work to that so how did you work harder than other people what was your approach towards that actually working hard because you know a lot of people can sometimes feel like they're working hard but mm. the proof's in the pudding you obviously did work really hard so if you're saying initially you weren't the best player and you weren't the best build for it but you went on to then rise through the ranks what do you think it was about you that enabled you to do that um, probably a bit of family stuff. Like I, I look at my dad, I look at my mum who, you know, was having us three kids and still working, you know, pretty much full time. You look at my, my father who is, is one of those guys who just like just quietly just cracks on with everything um, to a point where like, you know, he's just, he's just grafting unbelievably hard. So definitely some, some really good, lucky enough to have some good role models in that, in that sense. Um, but I got caught up in a group that was really willing to work hard. Um, and of that group, pretty much all of us ended up playing international rugby, um, you know, and getting all the, the, the highlights that come with uh, a, a decent team in terms of winning trophies and, and making some good memories. So definitely lucky that like there was about three, four, probably about six of us who who were from the same sort of group, same timings uh, and like managed to to push each other unbelievably hard. Um, and I guess that's like, you know, when you get a, a group a, a group in yeah. a startup and you're like, yeah, everyone's fun. buzzing off each other, everyone's sort of making uh, making the extra effort uh, and yeah. almost like challenging each other and they care for each other. And that's the sort of environment we had. And, and there was a really good core group, which uh, to be fair to Saracens, they, they kept that core group together for a very long time. And off the back of that, they could then, build the foundations in, you know, in, in other areas and, you know, um, so, yeah, so I'd say a lot to, you know, obviously you, you work hard yourself, but the, the surroundings kind of make you want to work hard and they did an unbelievable job of culture, but also of keeping that, that group together. Absolutely. And one of the things that I say to, to my business owners, I give them like a four step process to, to sort of conquer new challenges and, and step number four is get yourself an environment of winners. Because if you are in an environment of winners, you naturally raise your game to be at that level, right? And it sounds like you you really benefited from that in a big, big way. So that's awesome stuff. So you've been in rugby now, you said 12 years, or was it a bit longer than that overall now? Yeah, I was at, I was at Saracens for 12 years. Uh, and then, in, uh, like, I'd grown up south of London. Uh, I lived north of London for, for 12 years, and, and I, I, ne I needed to do something different. So off the back of the... World Cup in 2019, uh, which was in Japan. Uh, I, you know, I got to experience that. It was it was unbelievable. We, we, we end up losing the final, which is probably a one I still cry about most nights. But um, but you know, it, it, these yeah. things happen, and obviously make yeah. me stronger and all that. But it would have been nice to win it. But um, yeah. but yeah, I think like off the back of that, I was my eyes are pretty open to I, I should probably go and do something a little bit different uh, before I come back and, you know, retire for good and, and use sort of use the the efforts that I'd done through rugby to, you know, to, to give me a, a different experience. So I've been in Japan for the last well one and a half seasons and I'll finish up uh, here uh, in the next for the next three months and then head back and, and, and finish it all up and head into to business, which would be lovely. Yeah, awesome. Um, and what's Japan like? You know, I've, I've never been to Japan. I've yeah. been a lot of places, never been to Japan. It's, it's meant to be pretty cool, right? Yeah, if 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 you haven't, or if I don't know, there's, there's people who haven't, I would like, I'd stuff it right at the top of the list and do it for a good, a good like 10 days or so, because it is, it's just so different. Like the, the culture, the food, the, you know, you really feel like you're in a, a different world rather than a different country. Um, it is, it's very different to to, to what uh, what we've got back home in in a beautiful way. Way I think it's um, how's that influenced you by seeing that different environment? Do you feel that that's influenced you? Is that influenced your decision to and, and your career in business in in some ways, or how's that? What, what kind of influence has been in Japan for the last year and a half had on you? Yeah, a, a big eye opener. To be fair, like we're super, especially in rugby or or in elite sport, you like everything gets done for you. Uh, you know, your, your, your protein shakes are on in front of you when you finish the gym, you, you go, your, your lunch is cooked for, your, your forms are filled out, your, you know, some people you'll get houses, you'll get all the stuff like laid out in front of you. It's all sort of, your agent does heaps as well. So 
you're very sheltered. Um, and for me, it was like a just stepping out and doing something completely different, uh, definitely challenging. And, and, you know, I left at a time where I was still playing for England. So it was, it was a, it was a, a brave enough decision, but something which I, I, I thought I had to do in terms of growth. Um, and yeah, I, I'd, I'd learned heaps like this. I, I, I think England, and this is, this is not, I'm, I'm, I love England uh, in terms of the country and the people. Um, like I'm also a grumpy bastard as well, but like, it, <laughs> like we are a quite a, um, you know, you'll sit on a train and everyone will be on their phone. No one's speaking to anyone. Uh, I think, you know, when you come over here and there's foreigners in my team from Australia, um, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, you know, a, a good range of different people and, and clearly Japanese players as well. Like you just get a different flavour for people, how people live. And I think, um, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's just a good group of, of people and you realise that, you know, there's, there's more to just uh you know north and south of london uh, and people do it differently like they are more open they are more chatty um and that's something that you know i hope to definitely bring back with me and and something i will probably proud myself on uh prior to, to heading out as well awesome so how, how did your business idea come about i've had a look at the branding of four five it looks amazing product looks look brilliant you know and and and, if, and there are some sports people looking at that area, right? Um, mm. 100%, you seem to have taken to it really early and, and gone out and, you know, getting into it. So how did you become aware of the products? Um, first of all, is it something that you use personally? Is it something that you, um, or, or how did it come about? And, and then what is it that made you want to throw your weight behind that and build mm. that business? I think it'd be interesting to know. Yeah, uh, so it first came about, in 2018, when WADA took uh, a, a compound called CBD uh, off the banned substances list, yeah. and me and Dom, the other co-founder, who's also a professional athlete, um, we we were we were both had in both had injuries, both had surgeries. So Dom in January 2018, myself in February, um, and we're just looking at what else we could take, what else we could do to to get back on the field. Um, CBD was available to us uh, and, and got some really good genuine benefit out of it. So yeah. I think off the back of that, we were looking at, okay, well, there's, we are tested athletes. We do need to make sure we're, you know, consuming the right stuff. Uh, and, and there just wasn't enough out there that really satisfied us that we could, you know, take it without, uh, without I guess, keeping us awake at night. So went about, created our own brand. Um, subsequently, since then, uh, have like, have gone quite heavily into a, into the, multivitamins and sort of nutrition range um non-cbd nutrition range which is like and that that for me is like quite interesting topic like you you look at definitely the, the stuff we ought to be taking as professional athletes and you know when you get proper nutritionists to break it down and look at what's going on like so much of it is for for marketing claims and so much is just like it's got this amount in for for this and so it, it just didn't really sit too well with us uh, and off the back of that we we kind of created products which as athletes, we knew would benefit us and then looked at, okay, well, we can use these marketing claims and so on and so on. So I guess the emphasis was to, to bring about a trusted, decent product. Um, and, and yeah, I, off the back of that, it, it kind of just snowballed really. Like we're, we're into boots, we're into next, into a number of other retailers coming up, um, you know, and, and creating some, some really good partnerships with kind of top um, sports clubs, but, but also, you know, a, a rack of, really interesting investors and and like the whole sort of the whole i guess off field business piece has, has just given me heaps of energy which uh, i was it, it shocked me a bit about how much energy and how like drawn in i it, it was I, I thought i could you know on a brief scale go right i could build this up over five years and then sort of retire um but you yeah. know as you said i've, I've retired today because I just I can't ignore it anymore. We've got sort of seven employees. Um, yeah, we've got like people are respond like I'm responsible for people's wages and so on, which is just quite, you know, to do that sort of half in and half out is um, doesn't you know like you said at the beginning, athletes do well because they can focus quite hard on things, and and that's something which I need to now do with with the business. Absolutely, and I, and exactly what you're saying. The thing about business is it's forever challenging. 
you know, you've always got these new challenges. It's probably why it's drawing you in so much because you see the new yeah. challenges coming up and excites, you know, I, that's what I love about it. And I think that's what an entrepreneur has to love mm -hmm. about business is the fact that there's always something to do. There's always the next challenge. There is always the, the growth and there's always that opportunity to step up and go up the levels, right? Um, so yeah. it sounds like you've, you've thrown yourself into that, you know, in a big, big way. So what are some of the products that you've created that you're, you're proud of? And, and who is your kind of your target market? Are you looking to serve other athletes? Are you looking to serve people that have injuries or just want to get healthier? What, what's the kind of target market and what products are you really proud of so far that you've created? Yeah, so we've got a, a good range of uh, CBD products. So kind of like a, some joint gels, some muscle balms, but but obviously also uh, like tinctures. Um, and we've like uh, we've got a pro range on our uh, on our CBD side, which you know we've spent forever trying to get the right people to test it to the right levels. Um, and that's BSCG certified, which is brilliant. Um, and then on the on the vitamin side. Again, we've like we've got really good nutritionists work work with us uh, to just to make sure we've got like I know everyone will say oh everyone wants a decent product so we've got a decent product but like we're actually really proud of the product uh, yeah. and I guess the the proof in the in the pudding for us is sort of the the partnerships that we are uh, are building uh, that they're, they're coming from the nutritionists uh, and saying like right well we would kind of love to have these boys on board because. The product is actually something that's pretty useful so that's a good validation for us um but yeah i, I think in terms of target market it, it really is i guess like myself and dom and, and the journey and we we can live that quite you know quite happily um so dom retired now um you know he's kind of 35 36 body sore really keen to keep bringing you know to keep being active um and i think for me that's that's a journey which we can really buy into and, and believe like wholeheartedly um so everything i want to do post my career is about staying active for as long as possible uh, and that's kind of ties into sleep it ties into you know uh, body maintenance and so on so that's kind of where we sit and we there's such a huge area of of that that sort of 30 to 50 where you know that they've they've had a good life in terms of sport before or you know but they just want to keep maintaining active and they want to keep whether it's brain health gut health you know that there's i think off the back of covid there's been a, a big eye opening in terms of people's general health and well-being and, and that that sector i think is massively massively under sort of catered for at the moment and that's uh, that's the, the the target market i guess Awesome. So in terms of you um, being involved in business and, and jumping into this, this, this new world for you, what were some of the early lessons been for you, George, that you might be able to help some of the, uh, the people that are listening? What kind of lessons have you had so far? Because I think everybody's journey is slightly different. What typically happens is people start off in business and they've got a few skills that they're really, really good at. And then they yeah. realize that actually I'm missing a bit over here or I'm missing a bit over here. And you have to develop yourself, don't you? Right. So, for example, when I started off, I'd had a great career in sales, but I didn't know much about market. Right. I, I, I knew nothing about marketing. So I'm sitting there ready to serve people, but I've got no one coming to me. So I've got yeah. to develop the marketing side to get the clients. You know, the next thing that I learn is that, all right, now I'm good at marketing. I'm good at sales. I really don't know the numbers very well. So now I start needing to develop it on the numbers side. What are some of the lessons that you've had in your early stages, would you say, that, you know, have either challenged you or, or just skills that you've developed or built upon? I, I don't know where to start on this one because it's... <laughs> like, you're completely right. People, normal people who make businesses, they'll make a business because, like you say, they're unbelievably good at marketing and they're like, I've seen a gap or they're really good at finance and they can hire a marketer. Like me and Dom... But we're, we're athletes, so uh, so we don't really have the, those like out and out skills in either legals, finance, you know, marketing, whatever it is, social media. So for us, it's like, OK, well, this is an eye opener. Um, and and we've, I guess, had to the, the, the way to, we've had to counteract that is just to get a heap of investors on board, which can really help us uh, and sort of get really build a bank of mentors around us that you know if we've got an issue with say uh marketing then we go uh, and it's you know we want to do an affiliate program or something we've yeah. got like four or five people we can go to and ask look 
yeah. uh, what's your opinion on this, this and this? And we'll put forward a plan and then those people can kind of bat, bat them away, bat them down and sort of yeah. tweak it. So, so that's kind of how we've done it. Um, uh, and, and that's, yeah, I think that's everyone in their circles will have groups of people who, you know, who, who are very good at something. And I think the biggest, I guess the biggest strength we've tried to pull from, from being an athlete is like, you know, every week we've been told, okay, well, you're, you're, you, you did this rubbish. You need to improve on this. You need to, you know, yeah. and there's that whole question, that sort of feedback loop to, you know, to keep learning. So I think from our point of view to have that, um, uh, and, and to have a group of, I guess, mentors allows us to really, like, I guess, well, shamefully you're doing it the smart way, right? Because that is the smart way, you know, is, 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 and a lot of people don't do that. The fastest yeah. way is to get that transference of knowledge, right, from somebody yeah. else who's already got the knowledge, because the yeah. same as you would. Yeah. I think that being a rugby player that's had tons of coaches, it's probably yeah. easy for you to do that. But sometimes people, when they start in business, they don't do that. And yeah. their, their mentality is they want to figure it all out themselves. And what could take them a month takes them a decade, you yeah. know, so you can make yeah. much faster progress by working with those people that know exactly what they're doing in the area. All right. So that's, you know, that's yeah. smart. That's something that's come to your attention for sure. You know, yeah. and what part have you enjoyed? Has there been something that you've gone like, wow, actually, you know what? I really love the branding or I really love the marketing or I love the having these meetings or is there something that's yeah. kind of lit that fire in you that you weren't expecting? Yeah, I'm I'm a, probably a people person, so I like I deal with all like the network, the investor bits, um, and, and leaning into sort of partnerships now. Uh, and I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy that sort of building relationships and and creating something a bit more genuine than just like you know your surface level stuff. Um, so yeah, that that definitely be where where I sit. Um, but I mean, I th everything's a like everything is everything's fun i guess like the yeah. first time we we go to to boots and we're sitting in the the lobby and uh you know we're, we're a little bit nervous that we're about to pitch boots for you know to to take our business um but we we go in and there's people coming out in like suits and briefcases and we're in like i'm i'm, I'm actually on crutches and dom's got a black eye so it's like it's like <laughs> what sort of show is this yeah. um you know I'm, and you get in the room and it's like if you've got passion for your business and and you yeah. believe in it then you know those sort of things shine through so it's, it's kind of like just trying to shake off the fact that okay well you might not be the you know what someone sees as a typical business person or have the typical business idea but like if you've got that passion for it, it definitely shines through and and more often than not like you know the, the either the the people that we've uh, gone for for help or the or you know when you talk to boots or whatever like they are more uh surprised that you are asking them questions and uh, you know trying to learn off them um and and that's the yeah the, the biggest thing for me is i haven't i've seen so many people go oh that's like it's really nice to be asked a question around something they've got an expertise in so they they do yeah i i, I definitely implore that to, to to quiz people who are experienced because more often than not they don't get that enough and they are at point in their lives most likely that you know they're dead keen to help other people uh and and they want to share that knowledge uh and and obviously they've done it all before so it kind of if it can save you you know 10 grand making a mistake then absolutely no brainer, really. and that's that being coachable being willing to learn and being humble isn't it and people just love that right and they want to help you that's that's a you know a brilliant observation there also mm. some amazing things so what what's next then george we're we're now going full-time in three, what, like you've announced your retirement today, we're going full-time. What what are you going to be doing day to day? Have you, have you got a, a plan of what, what you're going to be attacking or, or, or is that, that's coming now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we, we've, uh, we did a, a, a decent business plan um, pre-Christmas and um, uh, just to give us a bit of structure because we can go wildly off track if, uh, if left alone. Uh, it is amazing to see what two, um, simple rugby players can, can can end up doing which you know you, you shouldn't be doing from from a, a business plan point of view so we've got a nice business plan to keep us in track um and i'll probably i'll be leaning more towards uh, partnerships and really growing that out um like i said we've got some really good um so saracens and leicester tigers being the official wellness providers but also jumping into a, a heap of other really exciting partnerships which 
I guess really show that you know the the, the product is the is the key focus in all of them, uh, and that's something which is is pretty exciting to us. Um, but yeah, just like a big a, a big part is will be the culture side as well, um, and making sure that you know we're we're building that team nicely um, and and using I guess the the team culture bits that we, would be a strength from our point of view from athletes and sort of and teams to to try and drag that into into our team uh, back home but yeah so that scaling um more investment coming through at the moment and uh and more more products as well so we've, we've, we've got our hands full uh and just trying to keep ourselves as streamlined as possible uh with some flexibility so in terms of the listeners and if they wanted to try the products there's one one observation that i want to say is because i've worked with a lot of people mm. in that have used, have become resellers or distributors or even created their own CBD products. And yeah. one of their blocks is obviously there are some advertising blocks around the product that, are, mm. that, to be honest, at some point will be lifted, right? Because of the change in attitude towards the product and how the product works. And I know personally, I know a chat with Parkinson's that's used the mm. product and just had amazing results. So I, so I understand the benefits in a big way that mm. they, so many levels they can be used. But a lot of people come up when it comes to that product with the excuse of how to market it. But it seems yeah. like you've got you've really zoned in on the right way to market it. Go and build those partners, go and build those relationships, you know, get yourself yeah. out there talking about the product. So for somebody that's listening today, what would be um they can obviously go over to the website. Do you want to tell them the website address so they can go and check it out? Yeah, so. uh, uh www.45.com spell four five rather yeah. than the <laughs> so four five dot com. And where did the name come from by the way? Uh it's a it's a slight just uh nod to the fact that me and Dom uh position numbers are four and five. So yeah. we'd play together at Saracens and it was a, a fitting name for us. And um, um what made Dom the perfect partner for you? Be, be, being you've worked with a lot of good people. Yeah. What was um, um, we we are extremely different. So like if if someone puts uh like a something in front of Dom is like, oh, you know, you could, you could, you can make millions, <laughs> millions doing this product or you could do this. Dom's like, oh, let's, let's go do this. Um, I'll be like, whoa, it's like, I'll be like super negative and be like, nah, 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 no way, no way. So uh, we are very different. We see, we see things extremely different, um, but at no point do we let differences kind of get in our way. He's, he's, he's brilliant. He's, he's really brilliant. He's, um, I think you need to find people around you who you, that you can give feedback to but they don't get like they don't get their heckles up and they don't take it personally like the, the it's the biggest thing i found with teams is like the the goal has to be the team winning or the teams being successful or being in a good culture and that like you should be able to say anything to a teammate as long as it's come from a good place and you genuinely think it will help the business yeah. uh, so all of our sort of anything that a normal people would probably disagree on and maybe start getting a bit pissy about like it, it's all comes from a good place it all comes from we think it's going to help the business and it's sort of like a, you hear a lot of teams being team first so anything has to be team first uh, i nice. think it's that's very much how we assess our sort of comms um you know and, and everyone everyone like you know disagrees at some points but i think that's that's the method we've taken to, to I think, I think that's brilliant. you know having that team focus is gonna certainly take you places so what would the best product for somebody to sort of check out first that you offer for somebody that's listening today um what would be best for them to perhaps have a look at would you say um i think um i think from the nutrition point of view uh, i think the male and female multivits are are absolutely bang on there there's they're so on point in terms of like what's actually good what's um you know the, and and obviously clearly four males and females so they've been formulated specifically so not with me and dom in a kitchen with a, a spoon it's you know we've got some some really good nutritionists who are on point with that <laughs> yeah, so um yeah, yeah I'd, 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 that's that's a definite favorite of mine um and then from the cbd side um really depends what you're up to but if uh, like some of those i guess the the muscle rub it's a cooling menthol rub uh, infused with cbd and uh, and I, I, that's that's a beautiful one you get heaps of good feedback off the back of that um but obviously also the the the, the oils are uh, are the best sellers um and i guess for a reason yeah 
Absolutely. Well, Brent, thanks so much for coming on today, George. Uh, best of luck. I'm sure you don't need uh, best of luck because I think you're going to absolutely smash it, my friend. But, you know, I hope you and I really maybe I look forward to catching up with you in the future and seeing how this develops, because I think there's big things on the horizon. So congratulations on your career and now your retirement and this new chapter, mate. And I'll, I'll be looking out and, you know, looking to see how you do. because I'm sure you're going to do great. Uh, so thanks very much. And you've been a very welcome guest on today. No, thank you very much. And I, I would, I'd implore people to, you know, reach out to the, the people, especially if you're in a startup phase, to, to reach out to the, the people who they've got around them and really quiz them, really ask them, because they definitely like that. Um, uh, but also failing that, if there's anything they think we could do or possibly help, we're super collaborative as well. So just get in touch. Oh, brilliant. Thank you ever so much. So thanks, everybody, for listening to Business Growth Secrets today. We've uh, George Cruz, some amazing stuff. Go and check out 4-5, uh, amazing new brand in the CBD and nutrition space. And I look forward to seeing you on our next episode. If you haven't already, don't forget to go and hit that five-star reviews so we can keep delivering you amazing interviews like today. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.